Hello YouTube! Today in the Naughty Librarian I am doing my April wrap-up. Before I start the wrap-up I want to handle one little piece of business and that is I hit 3,000 subscribers. It is bananas. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think it would happen and it happened and it like blows my mind every day that I get to like geek out on the internet with everybody about books and it is so cool. So thank you all from the bottom of my little black heart. <laughs> I love all of you so much. So thank you so much for helping me get to 3,000. In honor of that, I'm gonna be doing a Bardugo AF giveaway. In front of me, I have Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, and King of Scars. All of these are signed by Lee Bardugo, and they will be yours <laughs> if you win my giveaway for 3,000 subscribers. Follow me on Instagram, all the rules will be there, and Good luck. I hope someone wins who's going to absolutely love these. These are some of my favorite books that I've read. And yeah, I just want to give like a little thank you to everybody for subscribing. It's super cool. Like I've met people from all over the world. I've met people in Scotland. I've met someone in the Philippines. Her name's Carrie and she's really cool. Like I've met like a lot of people all over the world. It's crazy. Moving on from the giveaway, in April, um, I read 14 books again. I don't know why it's 14 every freaking month. It just kind of happens that way. I, it's just like, I, it's always 14. So uh, it's a lot of books. I got a lot of explaining to do. So let's just get right into it. First category is fantasy. And I read two books this month. I finally read The Wicked King by Holly Black. I absolutely love this series. I love these like dark twisted little Slytherin-y characters. Everything about it, it's, it's just so well written and juicy. And I love like all of the fairy court intrigue in it. And I love it when like evil characters become in like anti-heroes. Like it's like my jam, I love it. <laughs> Cardin in particular, he was kind of the bad guy for a lot of Cruel Prince, and in this one he's more of an anti-hero, and I'm like, all right, I'm like down for this progression of your character. But still, like, Cardin and Jew's relationship is toxic AF, and they shouldn't be together, but I, I want them together. <laughs> it's so weird that I'm rooting for this toxic relationship, but like, I love them together. They're like, their little black hearts are perfect for each other, and I love them together. I love their dynamic with each other. And I think that's like the core of why I really, really like this series because it's kind of like cat and mouse dynamics, but they're both cats. So it's just two cats fighting. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this is super well written. There's a lot of like cool court intrigue in it. There's lots of cool action. Jude is the heroine in this and she's one of my all time fave characters. She is Slytherin AF. Basically, if you need to overthrow a government, call up Jude because she will figure it out for you. She is a amazing character. And again, I just, I'm here for her and Cardin's relationship. It's so messed up and toxic, but I love it. So if you, if you want to read about that, <laughs> this is the book for you. I also read Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. This was probably my favorite book of the series, I'd say. I say that about every book I read because everyone I like more and more. But this one in particular is basically all of these characters who have been separated for the whole series are now all coming together into one place. And they're all plotting, you know, political intrigue. And like, I'm gonna take over the world and fight off these bad guys and reclaim my throne. And all these people are here to help me. And I love it so much. <laughs> I really like Aelin. She's just a great heroine. She always has a plan and it always comes together in the, like the best way. Nothing makes sense until like all of a sudden snap. Oh my gosh, that's why she said that at that point. I get it now. I love that. I love like there's payoff in it. You're not just gonna read a middle book where not a lot happens. Every book has payoff in it and I love it. Also, this book is my first foray into Sarah J Maz smut. And I have heard people say Sarah J Maas books are kind of smutty. And I was like, well, I mean, my definition of smutty may be a little bit more extreme than some people's version of smutty. So let's see what's going on here. And um, it's pretty smutty. <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> so much happens in this that it's almost impossible to review in like a little snippet, but it's very plot based. All the characters are coming together. There's a lot of payoff. The end is emotionally devastating. Like, oh, they just crushed my soul. Like the end. I won't say what happens because, you know, spoilers, but like, dang girl, you like crushed me. 
I was devastated. It is such an ending. And I know the next book doesn't clear up any of this. I'm gonna have to go through a book before I get to the book that fixes this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so much. It's gonna be so much like tension in my soul. So <laughs> um, suffice it to say, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Next category is real world fantasy. And I read two of those. I finally read The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. And I genuinely really liked it. I can understand why some people don't like it because it's a lot to take in. It's very purple prosy. It's very whimsical. Maggie Stiefvater mainly writes kind of magical realism. So if that's not your bag, you will not like this. <laughs> However, if you're totally down for magical re realism and you're just okay seeing things just be weird for the sake of being weird, like, you'll love it. It's great. It's, uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say what exactly the plot is. Um, like I said, it's magical realism, so it's magic that happens in everyday life. And in this one in particular, there's this group of boys who are hunting for these ley lines. And ley lines are lines that crisscross on the earth that have more energy to them and can, Im like, make magic happen, essentially. So... They are searching for these ley lines. There is a girl named Blue. She knows about the ley lines because she comes from a family of psychics who are actual real deal psychics. And it's all about their kind of friendship and partnership and them trying to find these ley lines. And I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm just going to say I did. I get why some people might not enjoy it, but I say give it a chance because it is very weird at the same time as very mundane but that's magical realism. So it's kind of like you either like it or you don't. Continuing on with the Kate Daniels series, I read Magic Binds. I wasn't necessarily sold on the new story arc because the main story arc was already completed. They're starting a new thing now. And this one like got deeper into it. So now I'm like back into the story again and I'm like, okay, like, like I wanna see where this is going. And again, it's like fun, it's funny. It's action-packed, it's bloody, it's gory, it's got like everything you want in a good urban fantasy. Like some parts are very much like a little over the top, it's just like why are you doing that? Like it's silly, but like if you just suspend disbelief and just be like, I don't care if it's silly, la la la, then it's, it's very enjoyable, so <laughs> I recommend just going with it. Because things get kind of weird in this one, but if you just go with it, it's a fun ride. I recommend this so much. It's hard to explain it because it's so far into the series and have it make sense. Just trust me, it's funny, it's action-packed, it's a great urban fantasy. This next section I'm calling, how did this happen? Because these are books that are made out of things I enjoy, but I hated them. I read The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi and I went in with very high hopes because it has a lot of things that I'm very interested in. It takes place during the Belle Epoch in Paris, so we have all of that like imagery right there, which is dope. I love that era, it's beautiful. And then you have them trying to find magical artifacts, they're kind of a heist story, they're misfit characters, and I was into all of that. I was like, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like Six of Crows, kind of. And the thing is, okay, you know when you go to the grocery store and then you want Fruit Loops, and then you see like the store brand Fruit Loops that are like Fruity O's and they're made out of the same exact things. But those Fruity O's, they don't taste like fucking Fruit Loops. That's this. This is the store brand version of Six of Crows. <laughs> it's made of the same ingredients, but something terrible happened it, between the ingredients and the bag. Like, I don't know what happened here. I just, I, I honestly gave no shits about anybody. Like zero. It was astounding how little I cared how this turned out. <laughs> and I like, I was worried this was gonna happen because I did read another book by Roshni Chokshi. I read Star Crutched Queen. And again, that was a book made of everything I love and I didn't like it. Same thing with this one. So I think it just might be my reading taste and her writing style don't mesh. I think a lot of it lands on the shoulders of the main character here. His name is Severon, and he is supposed to be like the Kaz Brecker type. He is the ringleader. He is the one planning all these elaborate heists. And this kid is so dumb. How has he not been arrested every time he tried to steal something? 
It's frankly baffling. The only reason I could think he hasn't been arrested is because it was like 1880s and the police weren't that smart yet in like criminal science. So <laughs> that's why he's getting away with it. There's no other logical reason. He's that dumb. I don't know if he's necessarily dumb. Dumb's a strong word. I think he's just gullible. Like he just, he doesn't think about shit. He's just, ugh, ugh. <laughs> just so many plot holes. I don't even want to get into it because my blood pressure's just rising because I, it just, it's made of everything I love and it's bad and it makes me unhappy. Mm. I hate to report that I DNF'd Ink Mistress by Audrey Colthurst. I didn't want to. I read like over 50% of it. And again, how did this happen? It's made out of really cool ingredients here. You have a demigoddess who writes the future in her blood and then her ex-girlfriend is a fucking dragon. Like, how does that not sound incredible to everybody, right? That's such a cool premise and it's so boring. It's so dull, like nothing is happening. I don't like any of the characters. And I understand that the main character in this grew up in like a remote mountain cave thing. Like she grew up very isolated. So yeah, if she's going out into the real world, she's gonna be very naive and not understand things totally understandable but like she doesn't have any goddamn sense in her head i swear like things that are common sense even if i thought i grew up in a cave i would just reckon out like i'd be able to figure that one out like she doesn't and it bothers me it's just made of everything i like it's such a cool premise and it was just executed so poorly and it made me sad it made me sad because i really wanted to love this and like i don't I just don't, and I didn't have time to like deal with it anymore, so I DNF'd, I just did. I mean, I hope some other people do find it cool. It does have a, like a really cool premise. Some of the writing was pretty okay. It's just like, if you didn't get to the point by 50% in, you're not getting to the point. So I gave up. Next category is Fighting the Patriarchy, and I read two very feminist books in this category. I finally read Car Evolve by Stephanie Garber. Honestly, the story I thought this was wasn't the story I got. So it did surprise me in that regard because I thought it was just gonna be all whimsy and story and, and, and magical circus. And really, it's more about these two sisters overcoming abuse because their dad beats the shit out of them all the time. So it took a turn I wasn't expecting. And it's definitely about them uh, finding agency in their lives and kind of overcoming, you know, oppression and their evil father. And so, yeah, that was a completely different direction. I didn't see this story going in. I mean, it's also about a magical circus. Like, don't get me wrong. It's also about that. I just didn't expect there to be so much like fight the patriarchy going on as well. We follow two sisters, Scarlet and Tella. We follow Scarlet in particular because she is looking for her lost sister, Tella, who was taken into Caraval, which is kind of like an all immersive circus game where like reality bends and you don't know what's real and what's not real. And like there's prizes and shit. I could see why people really like this. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on and a lot of uh, magical things that are interesting. I like the sister bond. I like them fighting the patriarchy. I like all that stuff. It's just probably not the book for me. It's just not my specific taste. Like, I don't see myself continuing on, but it's like, I don't have any bad blood between me and this book. It's just not my jam, but I can see it being a lot of people's jam. I also read Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nan. Going into this, I was really, really nervous because I didn't know if it was going to be just too much because I'll tell you right now, page one is a list of trigger warnings for sexual assault. So going in the book, you know you're about to get into some raw shit. And I was worried because I've read a lot of books that deal with sexual assault and I've had the same problem over and over again with authors where I feel like they just sensationalize it rather than like taking an approach that's responsible or dealing with the survivor of it and their emotional state is more just focusing on, look how horrible this is, not like, oh, look at this person who survived it. And that's a problem I have in a lot of books. So I was nervous going into this, to say the least. However, this was so good. Oh my gosh, it just got everything right. Like, amazingly right. I was stunned how good it was. 
while there is a fair amount of sexual assault in this, is not happening on page. And I don't feel like it needs to happen on page. We all know what's happening and it's horrible. And this is more about this group of girls who are dealing with it and they all deal with this assault and this trauma in different ways. So it's kind of like a character study on how to deal with trauma. In this world, uh, there are demons who are like the ruling class and there's a demon king who's a real son of a bitch. He's basically the poster child for fragile masculinity. And he basically takes a harem of nine paper girls and paper girls are like regular humans. So they don't have any powers, they're just weak. And he takes nine of them every year and just rapes them all, all year until he gets tired of them and picks a new nine at the end of the year. So, sucks to be them. <laughs> this one in particular, we're following Lei and she does not want to be there. She is also kind of coming into her own sexuality where she realizes she is in love with another girl. <laughs> so it is an FF romance and it's about these girls dealing with this trauma and assault and how they rebuild themselves after it. So it's really about strength and surviving and it's really, really just hits the nail on the head. It doesn't sensationalize the assault. It deals with the survivors and how they deal with it. So it like, really surprised me how good it was. Like, I finally found the one book who did it right. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. So yeah, I recommend reading. It is, like, it does have trigger warnings on page one, so be aware, but it's really good. I recommend. Next category is romance, and I read two of those. I read Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye. It's like a juicy melodrama and I was so in, like just popcorn, like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Like it's ridiculous. It's so over the top dramatic, like histrionics and I love it. <laughs> this is about Nick and Livy. They were childhood sweethearts. Their families are like best friends. And then an event happens where their families get torn apart and now they're kind of like enemy families. And so Nick and Livy, separate and then they make it a thing that once a year every year they just get together and just have like sex all night and then part ways and don't tell anybody about it and then finally now they're both living in the same town at the same time and they never really stopped loving each other even though they were broken up and they both have had like shitty relationships with other people they're both just like stupid about each other and yeah, now they're in the same place at the same time. Obviously, they're gonna get back together. And it's just so dramatic. It's so dramatic. I love it. <laughs> also, sufficiently smutty. Oh my. Like, I think, I would say a good 35 to 40% of this is just fucking. So, if you just want to dive into something that's so ridiculously histrionic, but very smutty, exhibit A, <laughs> like I recommend. I also picked up Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. This is a novella in the Reluctant Royal series. I love this series so much. It's just gosh darn delightful. This one in particular was very, very cool for representation because you have a heroine who is actually in a wheelchair due to nerve damage. And then you have the hero in this who is on the autism spectrum. So both of them are very uh, kind of unique people and they're both getting together. And you know what? I haven't actually read a romance that had a character in a wheelchair before. So that was a new experience for me and I was excited about it. Also, Regina, the heroine in this, I've been reading about her in two other books in this series. So I've been wanting to her have her own little story here. And I loved it. It was so cute and funny. There was enough jokes in it that like, it just highlighted things. Uh, it had some smut in it. It is a novella, so it's just not a lot of smut, but there is a bit. And it's just delightful. It's a delightful little story. I enjoyed it so much. I mean, it's a quick read. It's like 150 pages, so you can knock it out in a couple hours. It's adorable. I love it. Next category is sci-fi, and I read one of those. So The Fever King by Victoria Lee. Kind of surprise hit. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. I was like stunned because I, I don't know, like I was hoping to like it, but I didn't really have like high expectations. I thought I'd like it, but not love it. I'm like, I loved it. It was really good. <laughs> but I don't mean it's good in the sense where it's like, oh, action all the time and like crazy characters and like all of this dramatic stuff. 
there is a lot of dramatic stuff in this, but it's more quiet, I would say. It's not like a big in your face action adventure. It's more quiet, thought provoking action. So I don't want to give you the wrong impression of the story. This is in like post apocalyptic America where everything's kind of a wasteland, but they've made like city states. So we're in Carolinia, which is kind of like the Carolinas. That's all its own little country now. And there is this virus that you can get that kills 90% of people. But if you survive this virus, usually you get magical powers. It's a weird kind of magic because they explain it via science, but it's still magic. So magical science, it's like a thing in this. We're following Gnome in particular. He is a refugee from Atlantia. So he's in Carolinia. His parents are illegal and he is born there. So it's very topical to what's going on now in this country. Also great representation. First of all, Gnome Alvaro, he is a refugee, so you have that representation, and then you also have him being bisexual, and he does fall in love with his male roommate named Dara. So there is a MM romance in this, and there's a lot of things about uh, racism in here. There's a lot of things about Marxist theory in here, which is odd because this is supposed to be a YA book. There's nothing in here that I think YA readers wouldn't enjoy. It's just, I don't know a lot of teens who want to have a philosophical conversation about Marxist theory. <laughs> I'm sure there are some, but it's a very niche audience. Like, I don't think this should be in the YA section. This is obviously an adult book that just happens to have a young protagonist. And I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very well written. I think if you're a fan of The Magicians, either the TV show or the books by Lev Grossman, I think you would absolutely love this. It's got the same kind of sardonic vibe to it. If you're into that, you will love this. I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought it was amazingly written. Like, blew me away. Next category is contemporaries, and I read two of those. First off, we have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This is about Brie. She is a 16-year-old girl. Uh, frankly, she's living in poverty, so she has that already going on. She dreams of being a rapper, and her father was kind of like a cult underground rapper. Like, he was so famous, everyone loves his stuff. But sadly, he was killed in gang violence when she was very little. So you also have that all going on in the background because her aunt is still very much involved in that. So there's a lot of things going on in her life that are getting in the way of her dream. And she also has all of the world telling her who she is, but she's not figuring out who she is for herself. So that's kind of like the main point of the story here. Now, I, I get why some people might not like this as much as The Hate You Give, because if you're gonna compare Brie to Star, they're very different characters. A star in The Hate You Give is obviously the good guy. Like everything about her is like, I am the good guy. I am full of truth and justice. And then you have Brie, who is much more murky of a character. Like I don't think she's necessarily likable. I hate using the word likable or unlikable, but you don't have to be likable to be a good character. And like, let's be real, Brie is a hot mess most of the time. Like she is just a mess. And I can see why people would find that unlikable, but I appreciated her journey much more because she had more growth to obtain rather than Star, who started off at the baseline, I am truth and justice. So definitely more of a story arc here. I, I yeah, I just think Brie is a very dynamic character. I really appreciated her story. I liked reading all the raps in here. I'm like, I don't know how she wrote them down. Like she came up with all these in, like actual raps in the book. So it's all really, really cool. And yeah, so personally, I liked it better. I like her sophomore book better. I know a lot of people didn't. I do. I think it's a more complex character. And if you're into like characters who might not be likable, but they're definitely dynamic, you'll probably really like this one. I also read Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. It is about a girl named Ellery and she has a twin brother named Ezra. They both have to, have to go live with their grandmother in this small town because their mother's in rehab. So starting off, like, there's, you know, the kids are not all right. So we're starting off kind of murky. And then they're moving back to this like small town where girls keep going missing. So double layer of murky going in. 
one of the girls that went missing is actually Ellery's aunt. She's never met this woman because she disappeared before Ellery was even born. So this is touching their family very uniquely and then more girls have gone missing since. Ellery shows up in town and basically things start getting weird real quick. The people are leaving threatening messages around. They're saying, we're gonna kill the homecoming queen because all these girls who've been murdered were like the homecoming queen. And so yeah, Ellery is stepped in shit right away. <laughs> and it's like, you know, a typical murder mystery where everyone around you is an unreliable narrator. Everyone's lying. Everyone has their own opinion about what actually happened, but very few of them are actually facts. So you're going through all these things and trying to figure out what's real, what's not real, what actually happened, who's lying. So it did keep me on my toes. The killer does kind of come out of left field. It made sense when it was revealed, but like, yeah, just, it does come out of left field. So you weren't expecting it. Although like, I had like a suspicion because there's one line in the beginning of the book about this, the killer character. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. They brought that up. And then I forgot about it. And then when the killer got like exposed, I was like, oh um, yeah, yeah, that's the killer. <laughs> so the clues are well set up. It's just like lies and secrets and, and murder. <laughs> so you want a good suspenseful murder mystery that like, frankly, it's a bit slow, but good payoff. I recommend. Last category is Wicked Spirits Book Club and for April, we read Angel's Blood by Nalini Singh. Lauren, Brandy, and I already kind of reviewed this in our live video. I'll post that down below so you can check that out. Overall, uh, it was really fun. It's a good paranormal romance. It, like, uh, there's some shit in here who, that's just ridiculous. But with any good paranormal romance, you just kind of have to go with it. Like, all right, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. Let's just go with it. And then usually it pays off. So, <laughs> you know, there, you kind of just have to suspend disbelief here. Basic plot, we follow Elena. She is a vampire hunter. And in this world, uh, archangels and angels exist. Everyone knows about them. They got their own skyscraper in New York City. And angels make vampires. I don't really know why they do that, but they do that. And then sometimes the vampires go rogue. And that's where Elena comes in. She hunts them down. Elena is dealing with Raphael in this book and Raphael kind of a prick. It took me a long time to like him. And then his like story arc and how he changes by the end of the book is frankly ridiculous, but whatever, I'm going with it. I'd rather have him be a likable love interest than have him be a prick the whole time. So hmm. it's like bloody, it's action packed, it's vampires, it's sufficiently smutty. It's got everything you want in like a fun paranormal romance. So it was fun, I enjoyed it. A little bit of world building problems, a little bit like character development problems, but nothing that significantly like hindered my enjoyance of the story. So I gave it a good solid four stars. Whew. All right, 14 books, a champion. Mm -hmm. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books. If so, what did you think? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, make sure you go over to my Instagram and enter to win my Bardugo AF prize pack for 3,000 subscribers, which is still insane to say. Thank you guys so much. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!